Welcome to the One Church Podcast. Our Joy to the World series will encourage, challenge, and inspire you to be the agents of joy in our world. Did you know the popular song sung at Christmas time, Joy to the World, was not written about the birth of Christ, but the return of Christ. As we wait for the coming of Jesus, let's reflect on why and how we can be joyful in this world. Please stay tuned as we prepare to delve into this week's message. Luke chapter 2, we're going to read from verses 8 through 12. Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 12. I'm going to read from the New Living Translation. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them, and they were terrified. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. He said, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. And you will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, lying in a manger. I want us to focus on verse 10. But the angel reassured them. Let's read that together. Verse 10. But the angel reassured them, don't be afraid. He said, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. Amen and amen. God bless you as you take a seat in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank God for his presence. Amen. Amen. When the Lord moves and shows up, you just, when you yield yourself to it, the Lord can do a great work in your life. And as I was just standing here, sorry, when I was standing there and just walking up, we were singing that stanza, just felt the weight of this assignment. Consecrate me now, O Lord, to thy service, Lord. By thy power and your grace divine. And it was not just about me that's coming to minister a word, but to all of us that's going to be actively serving the Lord in the next few minutes. We think we came here to sit and receive and just listen. But I want us to shift our mindset and our focus. We're not just sitting to receive and listen, but we're there to engage with the word of God and allow the Holy Spirit to do a work in us. Amen. So when you see me, maybe tears, it's not because of any other thing. It's just the weight of God's assignment, the weight of God's presence, and his glory is in this house. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So it's not sad tears because I'm bringing a word to you, which we're going to start a series today called Joy to the World. Amen. Joy to the World. Let's shout that out. Joy to the World. The Lord reminded me of how we ended off 2022 in December, New Year's Eve service. I don't know how many of you remember that word that I just was encouraged to challenge the church with. It was simply this, choose joy. Anyone remember that? Choose joy. And I was like, all right, Lord. And then he had given this thought of joy to the world. But, and if you remember our focus, not just for this year, but our assignment, our vision, and our mission as a church is to reach the, the one. Reach the one and... I really feel like this is going to bring it all full circle from December 2022, December 31st, New Year's night to reach the one throughout 2023 and now coming to the close of 23. Can you believe we're already in December? We're already in December, three days in, time is flying. But I want to encourage you, finish this year strong. Those things that you still feel are pending or unfinished or incomplete, God can still do mighty works in a matter of 20 or so days that he couldn't do in 12, 11 months. Amen? God can do it. So trust him for it. He could do it in a suddenly moment. In, those, in that night, I <clears throat> encouraged you to choose joy. It was four simple things. I'm not going to repeat the message. I just want to remind you so I could also set a foundation for today's word. First was see joy as a gift. See joy as a gift from the Lord. Second was find joy when God feels distant. When you feel distant in your life, find joy. 
Get back in the word of God. Go back to the moment you received the Lord as your personal savior and experience the joy that God gives through those uh, reminders. Third was be joyful together. Get with the people of God. Get in the house of God and worship the Lord together and you'll experience the joy that the only, only the Lord can give you. Last was this, number four was this, have joy in God's presence, meaning the joy of the Lord is your strength. So choose joy. We start this week or this series today with a message title if, for those that are taking notes, and I know many of you do, and those that are watching online, we welcome you as well. Today's message title is, title is I'm so glad. Amen? I am so glad. How many of you are glad? Huh? How many of us are glad? Just glad. I'm so glad I made it to December 23. Many didn't, right? I'm glad that I have decent or good health, right? How many of you are thankful? I'm so glad that I have a home to live in. I'm so glad that I have a family to love and to be loved by. I'm so glad that I have a church to belong to. I'm so glad for children of God that seek the Lord in truth and in spirit. I'm so glad for all of you. I'm so glad just for life. I am glad. Who's glad? Who's glad to be in the house of God? Who's glad to know the Lord? Who is glad? Here in Luke chapter 2, the shepherds were minding their business, doing their work, and something magnificent was happening just nearby, not too far away, but something magnificent was happening. And the angels of the Lord appeared to these shepherds that were on the hillside, and they just said, the angels told them, listen, we got some great news to tell you. What do we read in verse 10? Let's just look at that again. But the angel reassured them. Listen, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Sometimes we get afraid when we have an encounter with the Lord. Because it's too weighty. It's too, it's too magnificent. We've never seen it before. And you're like, we are awestruck and we don't know what to expect. And we don't know what he's going to ask of us. I think that's what we're afraid of. We're not afraid of the glory. We're not afraid of the presence. We're not afraid of the emotions or the feelings that we have. But I think what really makes us afraid is what is God going to ask of us in this moment? And the angels reassured them, don't be afraid. I bring you what? Good news. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to the world. That's where the, the phrase that, I know we know this phrase, joy to the world, but I, I felt like that Part right there is what gave me the inspiration for this series. Joy, great joy to all people. Joy to the, to what? Joy to the world. Joy to the world. Today I just want to set a foundation and as a reminder and encouragement to all of us. For many of you, you may feel like, ah, oh, this, I already know this. But guess what? Even those that have gone to church all their lives, it's okay to be reminded of some simple things. And for others, this will be new and revelation. And I pray that God will speak that into your life and let it be encouragement. And it also a, a, a wind of the spirit in our lives for all of us, the preacher, to the saints, to everybody, that God is going to move in a mighty way. Because I want all of us to leave from this place saying, I'm so glad. Can we say that? Come on, say it like you're in December. Say it like you said it when you were decorating your house with all that Christmas stuff. If you did. If you didn't, if you're getting there, say, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. We started to do some things around the house. And th this time, the three girls started doing most of it. We just had to do the heavy lifting a little bit. And Sharon was even not doing anything. She was just kind of in the kitchen doing. And she told me later, I, I had a few tears coming down. I was like, Why? Because they're getting older and they're doing these things and we may not have them for much longer. But guess what? Let's enjoy them when we have them. But I'm so glad. I'm so glad that we can have this moment. I'm so glad. I am so glad. I'm so glad. Listen, the enemy can come in any which way and he can disappoint us. He can distract us. He can discourage us. But let me tell you, never let the enemy take your joy. You keep declaring to the Lord, I'm so glad. I'm so glad that first Jesus came. I'm so glad Jesus came. That's what the angels heard. Hey, I got good news for you. 
And he went to tell him, go, go, go to the city Bethlehem. There's a baby born and he's laying in a manger, swaddled in uh, strips of linen and cloth. And he's there. I got some good news for you. This is Messiah. This is your Savior. But it reminded us and it reminds us today. That even when there was a time between the Old Testament and the New Testament when there could have been a silence, what you would call, or an absence in people's eyes and minds, that God was reminding me, listen, I, you may feel like I'm absent, you may feel like I'm distant, you may feel like you don't see me or hear me, but I'm here to tell you I am still Emmanuel, God with us. And when he said there's a baby born. He was telling the angels and he was telling the angels, but he was telling the world through that moment. And now today, even in this day, he's saying, God is with us. I want to encourage somebody here quickly. I'm so glad that even when it feels like he's distant or quiet or it feels like he's absent, he's not absent. He's working even when you don't see it. He's working even when you don't feel it. He's still moving in your life in ways that you cannot ask or imagine. God is with his children. God is with us. Matthew 1, 23 says, God was with us called Emmanuel. But he was not just God with us, but he, is, he, got, he was with us, but he is with us. It's not just a past tense truth. It's a present day reality. <laughs> I'm thankful. Like you always hear me say, you may feel like, oh, Pastor, you say, that, oh, but guess what? He, I can't stop looking back on all the things that God has done. We can't, look, we can't stop looking back on what he did for us in 23 from January till now. How many of us can say God blessed me in ways that I never expected in 23? Amen? Oh, come on. Many of you have testimonies of, I saw hands going up of people that received jobs, that received breakthroughs, received healing, that received prayers of miracles, of physical breakthrough, emotional breakthrough, tangible financial breakthrough. But God is saying there's not just what he's done. He can still do it for you today and he can still do it for you tomorrow. God is with us. And I'm so glad that he is. I'm so glad that he is because he came he came in Luke chapter 4, if you turn your attention there, in verse 18, it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. I'm so glad that he came to save us, to heal us, to make all of us right with God. I'm so glad Jesus set me free. I'm so glad that Jesus is alive. is alive. I'm so glad. I'm so glad that Jesus gave me life. Because he came to rescue, to save, to heal, to make us right with him. I'm so glad. And I'm just not glad for his birth. But today I really want to start from the almost the end versus focus on the birth. He really came to heaven, from heaven to earth to go to the cross to die for all of us. We're, we have that joy when a baby is born in a home. We have that joy. But we also have that, that grief when we lose a loved one. But for those that have died in the Lord as saints in the Lord and precious of the death of those that have died in the Lord... Of the saints, uh, we have to realize there's momentary grief, but there is an eternal joy that is awaiting. Jesus came to on this earth and he was born as a baby in obscurity, but he came to die on a cross so that he could not give us grief, but that he could give us joy. Because in Hebrews chapter 11 or 12, I believe it says that he saw it, he counted it as joy to go to the cross. So he came, but I'm so glad that Jesus died. I'm glad that Jesus died. Selfishly speaking, I should have been there. Selfishly speaking. And I don't know if I could have paid that price. I don't know if you would be comfortable paying that price of being crucified on the cross. But I'm thankful and glad that Jesus paid my price and took away my debt and gave me eternal life. 
and made me right with God. As it says in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, for God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. Amen? 2 Corinthians 5, 21, it said, for God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sin so that we could be made right with God through Christ. He made me right because he died. I'm so glad that he died. But he also gave me access because he died. He gave me access to a place that I as a sinful man would never have access to. Me as a Gentile would never have access to. He gave me access to the holy place. I was separated from God. I didn't have the, the access to the presence of the Lord or to the throne of God, to the mercy seat. But because he died, he gave me access. Many of us yearn for access to certain people. We yearn for access to certain places. We yearn for access to certain, some certain privileges. We yearn for those access. Don't we, we really think about it? We, have, we yearn for access. I would love access to some influential people. I would love access to some special places, even access to, you know, places that, oh, that would bring us joy or just historical places, uh, you know, whatever it may be. We, we don't mind some special access privileges. If you've ever gone to a conference, there are people that may have some tags or lanyards that say special access or go to venues and conferences or stadiums. They say special access. They get to go to places in the stadium that you and I as people that pay the tickets never get to go. I, as a, I love sports. I wish, I, I, I hope I would have worked in sports. I hoped. I would have worked in sports, and I, I, I wish I could get into the locker room of a, a sports team, of the Mets or the Yankees or any sports team. And I would love that access, but everyone does not have access. Anyone? We can just go to the seats that were assigned. We could go around the concourses to buy our snacks and our foods. But there are people in that stadium that have special access into special places. But they paid a price or they have been given that privilege. We have been given a privilege. It's a privilege. It is not a right. It is a privilege that we get. We have to take advantage of that privilege. We have to accept that privilege and say, all right, I have access. I'm going to the throne of God. And how did I get it? By Jesus dying on the cross. So I'm so glad that Jesus died because he gave me life and he made me right. But he gave me access to a special place. Because there is where God gives me everything that I need. Mark chapter 15. Then Jesus uttered another loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And that's where he gave me access. Because Jesus died, he opened the doors to the holy place. I'm so glad Jesus came, but I'm so glad Jesus died. But I would not be satisfied just with his death. I'm so glad Jesus resurrected. I'm not going to even say rose again because he didn't rise before. He, he was just born. He lived. He died. And then he, he resurrected. He's, he resurrected. It was resurrection power in his life. And I want to speak that resurrection power that the word gives us into all of our lives and situations. Let us come up with resurrection power. If we say rise again, it feels like that we're giving the connotation that we could fall again. If we say rise again, that means we fell before and we were standing up, we fell and we're going to stand back up and then it fell again. Yes, I know the Bible says we can fall, the righteous can fall seven times, but he will stand up the next time. Yes, those are truths, but I want, if we live in resurrection power, let's live victoriously every day, every moment of our life. Everything may not be perfect, everything may not be great, but I will live in resurrection power. I'm so glad. Who's glad with me? I'm so glad. He, 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 he rose again. I mean, sorry, he, he resurrected. But I'm so glad Jesus left. How many of you are glad Jesus left? Think about it. Think about it. I'm so glad Jesus left. You know, he even said it. It's best for you that I leave. He said it's best for who? You. It's best for me. It's best for me, Valerie. It's best for me, Pierre. It's best for me, 
It's best for me. It's best, it's good for me that Jesus left. If he said it's good for me that he left, then I'm so glad that he left. Because he saw it was good for me. In John chapter 16, verse 7, it says, but in fact, but in fact, it is best for you that I go away. Who's saying this? Jesus. Because if I don't, if I don't, the advocate won't come. He had to leave so the Holy Spirit could come. If I don't leave, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. So I'm glad he left, but we focus on the leaving. We don't focus on what we got. Some of us are still stuck on what we lost or what people have done or people have left, and we have not embraced what God has given to us. Amen? Pay attention to that. We may be stuck on what we lost or, you know, the pains of that separation, but he did not leave us for our bad or for our negative or for anything for us to feel a loss from. He said, if I don't go away, I can't give you something that you need. I can't give you something that you require. I can't give you something that will be for your good. That is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. John 14, 6, John 14, 16, sorry, it says, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives with you now and later will be in you. No, I will not abandon you as orphans. I will come to you. Folks, I'm glad that Jesus left because now I have a helper, a guide, a teacher, and a person in the Holy Spirit to lead me into all truth. If we're struggling with some areas of our life, hey, the, the questions that we have, the doubts that we have, the, the weaknesses that we fall into, the temptations that we get stuck in, I want to remind all of us here today, do we have the Holy Spirit active in our life? Because the Holy Spirit will not allow us to go down those roads. The Holy Spirit will not allow us to feel those ways. The Holy Spirit will not allow us to think those things. The Holy Spirit will not allow us to go into places in our lives because he is a good God. He is a holy God. And he is your helper. He is your comforter. He is your guide. He is your teacher. He can be all these things in your life. If we need help, take the Holy Spirit. If you need guidance, ask for the Holy Spirit. If you need strength, receive the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm so glad he left. I'm so glad that he left. Because now I have the Holy Spirit. I think we're trying to make life work on our own strength. Now, done it and I'll probably still try to do it on my human strength at times but I think we have to be in a constant uh, understanding and revelation that we would be submitted to the Holy Spirit and when he gives us a moment to pause and breathe and check ourselves that we would say God what are you trying to do what are you trying to say what are you trying to do for me lead me to you have to ask, why is this happening? What is the Lord trying to do? And he's going to put you in situations where he's going to ask you to grow up. And he's going to require you to think differently. He's going to require you to go against the norm. And he's going to require you to go against the, the, the flow of the world. He's going to require you to go be countercultural. He's going to require you to really stand out in the crowd. He's going to re ask, require you to do things you've never done before or start doing things you've never done before. He's going to require that of you as a child of God. Today, I'm so glad for the Holy Spirit. I don't have to do this alone. I can't be a husband on my own ability. I can't be a father on my own ability because I'm still figuring it out. I can't be a leader on my own ability. Because we've never done this before. 
It's my first time being a husband. It's my first time being a father. And then life happens and stages come and seasons come and seasons go. You're raising infants and you're raising toddlers. Then you're raising teenagers. Then you're raising young adults. And then you're raising all of them at the same time. You're raising people. You're raising leaders. You're raising all these things. And you realize this is too much for us. This is too much for me. You have to embrace the reality that you and I need help. And that help is in the person of the Holy Spirit. I'm so glad Jesus left. I'm so glad the Holy Spirit came. I'm so glad. Folks, if I could plead with you. If I could plead with you. Call on the Holy Spirit before you call on the pastor. Is that okay? Call your pastors. We'll we'll take your calls. But before you call the pastor, before you call a family member, before you call a friend, call on the Holy Spirit. If we would call on the Holy Spirit first, we would avoid a lot of other calls. Huh? Let me even say, there's a place for it. I'll promote it. I'll push for it. Even there's counseling and all those things. There's a need for it. But let me tell you, I don't know it all, but I'm telling you, I have to trust the word. I have to trust what Jesus said, that if the Holy Spirit is there for all those realities, call on the Holy Spirit first. Maybe we don't have to call on the counselor as much. Before you call the attorneys, call on the Holy Spirit. Before you call on the professionals, call on the Holy Spirit. Before you call on the advisors, call on the Holy Spirit. Call on the Holy Spirit. I'm so glad he left. He left to give me a help and a help to live on this earth victoriously, powerfully as a child of God. Not slumped down with a defeated spirit and mindset and burbage and all that. No, it is with a head held up high, with our shoulders back, with our spine straight, saying, I am a child of God. Be strong and be courageous. We life comes life will hit but you got to keep standing people you got to keep standing you got to fight you got to fight this this is how we fight our battles but this is how we overcome those battles this is how we overcome this is how we overcome not by my knowledge not by my relationships Oh, not by my connections or the people I know, not by my special relationships or connections or, oh, I know this or I know that or I know this, I have this degree and I have this wealth and I have all these things, but I know somebody greater than all those things. I have a connection. I have a relationship. I have a special connection and access to the throne of God, but also I have a relationship with a helper that knows where to lead me, where to guide me, where to protect me. Please, please. Please, please, church of God, one church, anybody that will listen, rely on the Holy Spirit. Yeah, give God praise in this house. I'm going off my... Rely on the Holy Spirit, folks. In December 2023, if I could start planting the seeds for 2024, rely on the Holy Spirit. Rely on the Holy Ho, Rebe. Ho, rely on the Holy Spirit, please. We, you, I promise you, you will not think defeated. Amen. I'm a competitive person, by the way. If you don't know this, I'm a competitive person. I think I've lost some of that with, uh, I don't know what, but I lost some of that. But uh, in, with the God stuff, I haven't lost it. I haven't lost it. I may have lost it with sports and all that stuff, and I think I need to get that back. Because that gives me a little edge in other areas too. But I'm telling you right now, I will fight every battle that the enemy tries to bring me. Not on my own strength, but in the strength of the Lord. Fight for your spouse. Fight for your spouse. I'm not even saying husband. Fight for your spouse. Fight for your future life partner. Fight for the people that left you. Fight for the people that hurt you. Fight, fight, fight in the presence of God. I'm thankful that the Holy Spirit is with me. 
I'm so glad he left, but I close with this. And it will bring us into a, a connection to, as we celebrate communion in a few moments, I'm so glad Jesus will come. <laughs> I'm so glad he left, but folks, he's coming back soon. Amen. If you believe that, shout an amen. amen. If you believe that, shout, I'm so glad. <laughs> Jesus will come. <laughs> he will come. He came, but he will come. Amen. Live like he's coming. I know we got our pensions and we got our retirements and 401ks, but let me tell you, we may not get to enjoy all that. Huh? But guess so, you know what? Enjoy a little bit now. Enjoy it. Take some of it out now and enjoy it. Seriously, I'm not joking. Yeah, right? Enjoy it now. <laughs> There's no point in putting up in pension and then he's gone and like, what did I do all that for? Take it out. This is some financial advice from the pulpit. All the financial people here, don't quote me. Don't, don't. Just take some of it out now. Enjoy it. I have no problem enjoying it. I save. I save for my kids. They, they don't even know what we save. God knows if they'll get what we save. So I'm like wondering, do we need to even save this? How many of you save for your kids? If you don't start saving for your kids... But also don't just save, save, save and make them miserable now. Enjoy life with them now. Enjoy. This is all you got. Cheryl, when she told me she cried while they were putting up decorations, I, would la I laughed at her first. But then I comf comforted her first. Then I, I sat back quietly in my own time. I didn't say it, I didn't cry or anything. But I reflected, my God, just in a few years, all three of them could be gone. So I'm going to enjoy them now. Whatever the God blesses us with, I'm going to enjoy them now. Because Jesus is coming back. He's coming back, folks. He's coming back. Enjoy your life, the life that God gives you. But let me also tell you, don't just live life to enjoy on earth. Live life with an eternal purpose. Live life with a kingdom assignment. <laughs> you like me telling you to enjoy life with your money? Now enjoy life with your service. Enjoy life with your life. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Enjoy life for kingdom purpose on this earth because he is coming back. We don't have much time left. That's why I'm thankful for a sister, Valerie, that's been coming to the church. And recently, in one of those Sundays that we had a powerful move of God, we just went till 1 o'clock. She gave her life to the Lord, recommitted her life. She, yeah, praise God. She's sitting right here. Praise the Lord. She's excited. She's glad. She's glad. She, she, yes, she is. And she came to church on Monday night prayer recently, and she started praying. And she reason, and told the pastors, and she let us know even from that Sunday, she's not ready, just committing her life to Jesus. She wants to get baptized in water and make her declaration public. Praise God. I'm so glad. <laughs> I'm glad Jesus is coming back. But let me tell you, he's coming back. So if you have not been saved and not been baptized, I'm not saying you won't go. Let's not get theological. But you need to be saved. You need to be saved. And if you're saved, you need to get baptized. Simple as that. There's no destination of, hey, six months later I'll get baptized. If you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord in your personal life, then you make that personal decision public right there on the spot. We will baptize you that same moment. We will, bap we will also disciple you after that. Amen? I think we have to readjust our thinking. Discipleship does not lead to baptism. Baptism launches your discipleship journey. Yeah, praise God. Discipleship starts from the moment that you said saved and from the moment you get saved and you get baptized in water as a believer, you are disciple. So you're not looking for perfection before baptism. You're looking for perfection in Christ, maturity in Christ from baptism through growth in the word of the Lord. So let us trust in the word of God and grow as a disciple from that moment of salvation. So if there's anyone here under the sound of my voice, here in this place, but even also online, let me just encourage you and invite you to this opportunity. Make that decision because I'm so glad that we still have this opportunity.
because he is coming back. I'm not the fear type of preacher. I don't preach fear and to make you afraid to make decisions. That's not how I pro operate. Many may do that, but I don't. I'm telling you, we will walk with you. We will wait for you, but we will also tell you and guide you and challenge you. This is the truth. This is the way. We will love you every step of the way. Amen. Folks, anyone. If you want to join with Sister Valerie in getting baptized, we don't have a date yet, but I want to just say it in faith, we'll do it before the end of the year. We'll do it before the end. We're going to finish this year as a church with baptisms as well. So we don't know the date yet, but it will be before the end of the year. So it's technically this month we will have some, a baptism Sunday. Praise God for one, but I believe there are more. So don't wait, don't stall, don't think too much. Trust in the Lord, use your faith, activate it, and grow with Christ. I'm glad Jesus came. I'm glad Jesus died. I'm glad Jesus left. I'm glad he will come again. He will come. In John 14, 1 through 3, he says, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust also in me. Jesus is saying this, there is more than enough room in my father's house. If this were not so, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? When everything is ready, I will come and get you. What a promise. Jesus said, I'm coming back for you. I'll come and get you so that you will always be with me where I am. Remember what I told you. John 14 verse 28, sorry. Remember what I told you. I am going away, but I will come back to you again. Amen. The first time he came to seek and save the lost. But the second time, he's coming to reign as king of kings. Amen. It's not coming for the lost at that time. He's coming with his church. He's coming for his church. That's why I'm so glad. In 1 Corinthians 11, as we start preparing our minds before we go there, what's the name of the series? Joy to the World. How many of you know that song, Joy to the World? You know what? Oh, all the hands are... Can we do a, what is it, a, a, a pop-up choir? What do they call that when you just show up in a mall and start singing or something like that? Go ahead. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Let earth Let every heart prepare him room. Let heaven and nature sing. Let heaven and nature sing. Let heaven and nature sing. An English minister, Isaac Watts, wrote that song in 1719. Joy to the world. The now popular Christmas song celebrated around the holidays of Christmas. Actually, he never wrote it with any connection or intention around Christmas and the birth of Christ. When you study the story of that song, it was based on Psalms 98, verse 9. Psalms 98 generally is speaking to the second coming of the Lord, not the first coming of the Lord. Psalms 98, verse 9 says, Before the Lord, for he is coming to judge the earth, and he will judge the world with justice and the nations with fairness. So joy to the world that we just sang and we sing and we will probably all around Christmas was never written for Christmas, was never written for the birth of Christ. That's not why he wrote it or when he wrote it or for the purpose for which he wrote that song. He wrote it with strictly the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. We've put our focus on the birth and we need to, but we have to shift our focus on the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember the birth. Remember the death. And remember the resurrection. But live for the second coming. Live for the second coming. So when you sing joy to the world now. I don't want to mess with you. But keep singing with. But just know it's not about the birth of Christ. It's about the second coming of the Lord. Let heaven and nature sing. Joy to the world. Joy to the world. Because Jesus came at first to seek and save the lost. But now, joy to the world. All my sorrows are gone. 
all my pain is gone. All my tears are gone. Now I, will, now I, as a child of God, will live in a glorified body, reigning with my King of kings and Lord of lords, and I will rule with him forever and ever. I have no more problems at the second. That is why there is joy at the second coming of the Lord. And That's why in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 26, it says, For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, if the servants of the Lord can just bring the, the table and the elements Every time you eat this bread, just pay attention to the scripture. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are what? Announcing the Lord's death, read it, until he comes again. Folks, as we celebrate and remember this memorial, as we remember this memorial of the, Lord, of the Lord's death, as long as we're here doing this, it is not just reminding us of a memorial of a death, but it's announcing the coming of the Lord. On one side, there's the death, memory. On the other side, there's the hope for the coming. And to someone's life, I want to just announce this as well. It's okay to remember what the Lord has done and even put to bed and put to death in your life, your past, your shame, your guilt. Remember all those things. But you now, you live with a mind and an eye and a heart towards your eternal purpose. Live for the future. Live for today. Thanks for joining us this week on the One Church Podcast. Be sure to tune in next week. If you are ready to start a relationship with Jesus, to make him the Lord of your life and receive salvation, please contact us at info at onechurchonline.com. We hope you found value in this podcast, and we'd appreciate you sharing us with others and telling your friends and family to follow along with us. Our prayer and hope is that this podcast can reach countless lives. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our YouTube and Spotify at One Church LI and visit us at our website, onechurchonline.com. Here at One Church, our vision is to see Jesus. We exist to reach the one with the love of Jesus and for all to live like Jesus. We want to see Jesus in each other, and we pray and believe there is more for you.